How many know God takes praise very serious? Amen. I'm going to be talking about the Egyptian Hallel tonight. How many know what the Egyptian Hallel is? Do you know? Well, before you leave here, you're going to know. It, it is six psalms consecutive, beginning with Psalm 113 all the way to Psalm 118. Uh, Jewish children had to memorize it from the time they began to read. And they would memorize those six psalms, and it was called the Egyptian Hallel, because it celebrates the deliverance out of Egypt. And they would sing these six psalms, these songs, they would sing them before the Passover, after the Passover. They would sing them during the festivities. It was just a, it was a time in which people sang the Word of God and celebrated the power of God. And let me say real quickly, um, God is very serious about you and I praising Him, loving Him, worshiping Him because He's worthy. We need to praise God because He's worthy, and we are unworthy. Thank God for the fact that God has given us so many blessings and, you know, just a wonderful blessing of the Lord. I'll be in Psalm 117 in the middle. Actually, we'll, did you know one, uh, Psalm 117 is the shortest chapter in the Bible? It is. It's the shortest song in the Bible. And it's in the middle of your Bible. So you can open up your Bible to the exact middle of the Bible, and you'd be at Psalm 117. There is 1,189 chapters in the Bible. You go to 595, and that 995th chapter would be the middle chapter, which is Psalm 117. Actually, the book of Psalms is, the, the whole book of Psalms is in the middle of God's book, a song. We can worship the Lord and praise God. And um, I want to share some things. It's a very short psalm, and don't get your hopes up. It probably won't be a very short sermon. We'll try. We'll see. But Psalm 117, let's stand for the reading of this two verses. Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations, and that all nations would be all Gentiles. Praise Him, all you people, for His merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise ye the Lord. Three times God says, praise ye the Lord. Now, we don't know who wrote this psalm. It doesn't tell us who wrote this psalm. But we do know that God is very serious about praising the Lord. The Egyptian Hallel is a very uh, positive proof that God wants us to worship Him and to praise Him intelligently, to give Him glory. Amen? Put me down a little bit. Would you be uh, my friend, my high technician there? Uh, the Egyptian Hallel. You may be seated. Now you know what it is. The great Hallel is in Psalms 136. And that's the one that has 26 verses where it talks about the, the Lord's mercy endures forever. I'm going to share some things with you. You know, this psalm, you say, well, it's so anemic. There's nothing there. Oh, yes, there is. Martin Luther wrote 36 pages on this Psalm 117. 
36 pages. Aren't you glad he's not preaching tonight? Bach put music to Psalm 117. Mozart put music to Psalm 117. It is sure that Jesus sang from one Psalm 113 to Psalm 118. There's without a doubt, Jesus is the fulfillment of Psalm 117. Because 117 is about the Gentiles, the nations, the people of the earth. All this time, God slipped, the Gentiles will be blessed. God slipped, the Gentiles will praise me and glorify me. And he slipped that in them, singing it for thousands of years. I mean, they were singing it. They thought they had it all. They thought nobody was going to get it but them. And all that time, they were singing a prophecy about Jesus. As Jesus walked his way to Golgotha's hill to be crucified on the cross of Calvary, he sung this psalm. He sung verse 1 and 2. In fact, he sung Psalm 113 all the way to Psalm 118, but he sung Psalm 117, and I think there was a big old smile go across the face of Jesus Christ when he sung Psalm 117. I thought... I, I believe he was saying, oh, Father, we're going to get them here. We're going we're gonna to bring eternal life. The, the Jews think they got it all, but praise God, I'm going to give all your love to the world through the cross of Calvary. That's our Jesus. Amen. Psalm 117, powerful, powerful verse. And I hope you understand tonight as we proceed in it that, that God has a lot to say about praise and about worship and about glorifying God. In fact, Hallel, the Egyptian Hallel, the word Hallel actually means praise Yahweh. That's what it means, praise Yahweh. I never heard a Jewish brother sing the Egyptian Hallel, but one day I'd love to. I'd love to hear him sing Psalm 115, which is in the Hallel, where they sing, the Gentiles' gods have eyes, but they cannot see. They have noses, but they cannot smell. They have mouths, but they cannot speak. They have feet, but they cannot walk. They have hands, but they cannot deliver. I'd love to hear that put to music, to worship the Lord. And all the time they're worshiping the Lord and they're giving God glory, we need to understand that God takes praise very serious. I, 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 I want to say quickly that praise is joy out loud. Praise is joy out loud. In fact, sudden sorrow is a cry out loud. But knowing God, Praise is bragging on God. That's what praise is. It's bragging on God. And I just want to take a little time tonight to brag on my God. I want to show some things. This, this Psalm 117 is bursting with praise. Three times, praise Yahweh. Three times, praise our God. And God is so worthy of our praise. The first thing I want to point out is we need to praise God with intelligence. You see, the, the Gentiles didn't know God, but Jesus is going to see to it that they know God. Jesus came to present the loving God, a saving God to the whole world. He's a fulfillment of Psalm 117. Because it says in Psalm 117, praise the Lord, all you nations, praise him, all you people. The Gentiles are included in the joy of the Jew. The Gentiles are included in the joy of the Lord. The Gentiles, I don't care what Jonah says, the Gentiles are included in the joy of the Lord. Praise God with, his great, praise God with great intelligence. 
Now, I don't want to sound cynical or unkind, but I've heard people praise God that they didn't sound very intelligent. The more you know about the Scriptures, the more your praise will mean something to you. The more you know about God, the more praise will actually permeate your mind and it will be real to you. Praise, if you don't know enough about God, praise is just noise. But praise is joy out loud. We need to praise God with great intelligence. I think that's important that we understand that God wants us to know Him so that we can really, truly praise Him. God wants us to experience Him so that we can truly praise Him. God doesn't want just an act or a move of crying and praying in church and making noise. God wants us to, down in the bedrock of our soul, you, you, you and I need to know who God is. We need to experience God. And praise must be intelligent. Psalm 115 says the Gentiles didn't praise their God with much intelligence at all. In fact, their God was pretty unintelligent. God's made of stone. God's made of wood. God's made of gold. God's made of silver. A graven image they were worship. And in fact, they, the, the Gentiles asked the Jews, where is your God? And the Jews answered back, our God sits in the heavens. And he does anything he wants to. He can smell. He can deliver, he can walk, he can speak. He's awesome. He created everything. Woo! That's Psalm 115. And so we look at that and we understand that we need to know God intelligence. Our praise to God needs to be with great intelligence. God mentioned this. In fact, Jesus mentioned this in John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. Remember, Jesus Christ said to the woman at Jacob's well, verse 23 and 24 of John 4, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Everybody say spirit truth. I'm going to say spirit truth. God is a spirit, not just a spirit. God is the spirit of everything. For the Father seeketh they that worship him in spirit and truth. So verse 23 and 24 of John chapter 4 says that we need to worship God in spirit and in truth. Now, I preached over the years as an evangelist, and I had a lot of people at times tell me, well, we want to hear the Spirit. We're not interested in hearing preaching. We're not interested in hearing about the things of the Bible. We just want to come together because God can do in just two or three minutes that the Holy Ghost comes in what what man can't do in a lifetime. And that's true. The Holy Ghost can do great things in just a few minutes. But how many know that, that God still gave Peter Plenty of minutes to preach on the day of Pentecost. And God does want us to be intelligent about Him. The Bible says we are to worship God in spirit and in truth. You see, if you just worship God in spirit and don't have the truth, you're going to blow up and blow out. You you know, you're going to have fun and you're going to be happy for a while and then you're going to blow out. You're going to be on cloud nine for a while, and then you're going to blow out and find out you're on the puddle nine in mud puddle water. It's not about coming to church and just feeling something and expressing something that's dynamic in our life. It is about that, but it's more about that because the real content of preaching is the Word. And the real content of praising God is, is the knowledge of the Word. And the real content of worshiping God is the knowledge of who God is. And the Bible says he seeks such to worship him 
He wants them to worship him in spirit and truth. And I've had people over the years tell me, well, you know, we just want to worship the Lord. We don't, we're not really interested in doctrine. We're not interested in theological things. We just want to worship the Lord. Just want to come together, hold hands and sing Kumbaya and you know, just worship the Lord. And, and, and you know, we just, we just want to get, love each other and blow kisses at each other and worship. And we just want to worship the Lord. And, and, and you know, in our day, they would say, well, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm just going to be a worshiper, not a truther. A worshiper, not a truther. Well, I'm a worshiper and a truther. Amen? I want to be a worshiper and a truther. I want to know everything I can about Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says we're to worship him in spirit and in truth. And I'm convinced today that there's way too many people that are worshiping God, worshiping God not in truth, but in spirit. What kind of spirit? The Lord knows. And sometimes it's God's spirit, and sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's a lot of emotion. Some, and and I, how, how many understand your, your pastor believes in emotion? And I believe in a lot of commotion in church. Amen? And I believe in a lot of locomotion. Not locos, but locomotion. I believe in the blessing of the Lord. I believe in the goodness of God. But we need to praise God intelligently. You know, it's like this morning. We went in deep into the waters. This morning in the preaching, we went in deep down in the crevice of the blood in the name of Jesus Christ. We went deep into scriptures. And boy, was your praise and your worship full of intelligence. Woo, that's what we want. We want to be full of the Spirit of God. We want to know what we're worshiping. We want to, we want to, we want to know that God is moving in our life. Do we want to be loud? Yeah. Praise is, is loud. Praise is worship. Praise is glory to God. Yeah, praise is dancing down the aisle. Yeah, praise is getting on the floor, getting so excited you'd be a holy roller. Boom, 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 boom. Some of you don't believe this, but I have watched people do this. Boom, 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 and almost roll over the top of Josh's. Feet. Well, Josh wasn't there, but at the time, but but when we got, we had people rolling in the floor. Chris remembers people rolling in the floor. Amen. Amen. Now today, the holy rollers don't roll in the church floor. They roll over in bed and go back to sleep, and you never see them on Sunday morning. Amen. Now, I'm not here to promote uh, radical or fanaticism, but I am here if you got it, you got it. If you're intelligent about the things of God, you got it. And no one's going to stop you from worshiping the Lord when you get a hold of great truths in the things of God. Notice verse 1 of Psalm 117 says, the Gentiles are called home to praise. The Gentiles are called home to praise. You say, well, how do you get that? Look at Psalm 117. Notice it says, oh, praise the Lord, all you nations, that's the Gentiles, praise him, all you people. They're called home to praise. They're called into the presence to pray. And aren't you glad God called you home to praise? Aren't you glad God called you home? Aren't you glad that God said, in my Father's house are many mansions? If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. And intelligently, we go, whoo, hallelujah. See, if your hallelujah isn't connected to the scriptures, you, you just, uh, you're just hallelujahing. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You got too many people just hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I'd teach you to let me preach on Psalms instead of Josh. Yeah. But there is some things about Psalm 117 that I want to point out that's very, very important. And of course, if you don't praise God with great intelligence, then you're just going to praise God with a lack of intelligence, and you're going to be in and out, in and out, in and out of church, in and out of the things of God, in and out of the Scriptures, 
in and out of prayer. Now, it's okay to be up and down, but it's not okay to be in and out. We all get up and down. We all have our down moments. Anybody in this room have down moments? We all have our down moments. Say, when is yours? I'm not telling you. But I, 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 uh, I hate to say this, but we all have our down moments, including myself. And we all have our up moments. But we should never have our out moments. Isn't that good? We shouldn't be in and out. We ought to be understanding that there is up and down, but we should never practice a life of in and out. We need to be in, not out, in, 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 in. Amen? Uh, Nevada, Las Vegas, they had a billboard sign. And on that billboard sign, it says, are you in? And I thought about that for a minute. I don't know nothing about gambling. But before I got past that billboard sign, I was shouting because I'm in. I'm in. Isn't that good? Jesus sung this song to, on the way to the cross. I, that, that blesses me. Because Jesus Christ in John chapter 1, verse 17, it says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that good? So Jesus is on the way to the cross, and he's singing this song. Praise the Lord, all nations. Praise Yahweh. Praise ye, all ye people. And he's taking his stance upon the cross of Calvary because he said, I'm going to give them something to praise about. I'm going to give them something to know that God loves them. I'm going to give them something that they can lay hold of. I'm going to give them a crucified Savior. I'm going to give them a Savior that shed blood for their sins. And not only am I going to give them a Savior, but I'm going to give them a, a, a Savior that suffered, a Savior that loves them. I'm going to give them a Savior that gives them the Word of God, gave them intelligent praise, gave them intelligent worship and I'm going to go to the grave and I'm going to bust the most hellish part and darkest part of the graveyard out. I'm going to raise again from the dead. I'm going to give the whole world Amen. praise. And that's what Psalm 117 is. Jesus is going to give the whole world praise. Isn't that good? Amen. Amen. Well, that's gooder than good. Let me just say a few things before we come to a close in the message. You say, you're about done. Well, almost. Praise is a privilege to all people. Did you hear me? Praise is a privilege to all people. And we shouldn't ever muffle it in church. We shouldn't ever hold anyone back from praising the Lord. I'd rather have a little fanaticism in church as none at all. Are you listening to me? I'd, have a, I'd rather have a little squeal and a dance that really isn't so much led of the Spirit of God, but I'd rather have a little, no, a little noise because we're not running a dentist waiting room or a library. Amen? I know you get all upset because someone, Woo! Glory to God! The only reason you're upset is because you, you were trying to sleep. <laughs> Scared you. Scared you. Amen. I remember one time I was preaching here, and about three seats back, a teenage boy went to sleep. And some of you maybe were here when that happened. I came down off the platform and went to him, and I shook him. You remember that? I shook him, and I said, Wake up! Don't be sleeping on me while I'm preaching. We aired that on television. I can't tell you how many calls I got. What did you do to that poor boy? I said, that's what that boy did to, what I did to that boy. It's what that boy did to me. Now, I understand if you're, if you're taking pills. I understand if you're having a hard time with, you know, staying awake. That's, that's, that's an old person thing. I'm okay with that. I love old people. They're gentle. They sleep. 
I don't have a problem with people falling asleep, but I got a problem with the teenagers hooting all night and then coming to church and trying to sleep in the church. Amen? I always tell them you can't hoot with the owls all night and fly with the eagles the next morning. And I realize there are things that cause us to be sleepy, but and I hope it's not preaching. But anyway, you know what I'm talking about. I heard the story about the one preacher said, hey, wake that guy up over there to sleep. Yeah, you wake that guy up. He said, I'm not waking him up. You put him to sleep, you wake him up. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> one guy hearing the preaching, man, he, the, the preacher just letting him have it. And boy, I tell you what, God is moving and a guy trips as he's going to the going through the church, tripped over one of the chairs or the pew leg, fell and just fell right in the floor and just knocked him out. Somebody began to get him awake and he said, hit me again, I can still hear the preacher. <laughs> praise is a wonderful thing. And praise is a privilege to all people. That's a privilege to children. Praise is a privilege to the unworthy. Praise is a privilege to everyone. Praise is for the most defiled and unworthy people on the planet. Praise is for the one that's rejected, unworthy. And praise will motivate you. I mean, no, praise will motivate you. And praise not only will motivate you, but praise will motivate those around you to take a different seat, but they'll motivate you. No, when you hear someone pray, you know, I love it when we, our church gets together and shouting and pray, like this morning, giving the Lord a big hand and praising God. And I got to thinking, you know, the visitors looking around and they're saying, you know, they agree with this guy. That makes me feel better. I mean, you ought to shout amen when the preacher's got it going. You ought to praise God when the preacher's moving on. You ought to praise God when God's moving. Why? Because there might be a visitor out there thinking you're not on the preacher's side. <laughs> Amen? How many are on the preacher's side? Thank you. I don't know how many of you are lying, but thank you. <laughs> or maybe not lying, just exaggerating. This is interesting the Egyptian Hallel. And Paul talked about this Hallel. How many would agree that Saul, a Tarshish, Apostle Paul, learned the Egyptian Hallel? He was raised as a little Jewish boy. He learned the Egyptian Hallel. And they sang it, Psalm 113, all the way to Psalm 118. And Paul knew all about the Hallel. And so Paul is trying to talk about grace. He's trying to talk about God forgiving us and washing us clean by the power of God and how it's by grace and not by works and it's a blessing of the Lord. And so Paul quotes Psalm 117 in Romans chapter 15. Did you know that? Paul quotes it in Romans chapter 15. I don't know about you, but that's pretty cool when you stop and think that Paul used this Hallel. And, and I may would agree that Psalm 117 was probably the most favorite of the Jewish children. Why? Because it's the shortest. Right? It's the shortest. Amen? My preaching gets better and better the shorter I preach. But I don't want to be too popular. I will admit, I preached too long this morning, but I, I, the juice was flowing. I still had sweet in my bubble gum, my gospel gum. It was still, still going. Romans chapter 15, verse 9 to 11, Paul talks about the, Jew, the Egyptian Hallel. Actually, he talks about it in verse 11 of chapter 15 of Romans. But listen to what Paul is saying in verse 9. And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, 
Now, when Paul says, as it is written, he's getting ready to quote a verse somewhere. And he says, as it is written, for this cause I will confess thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. He's quoting Psalm 18, verse 49. Psalm 18, verse 49 says, Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, that's the Gentiles, and sing praise to thy name. Paul is also mentioning in verse 10, and again he saith, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people, and he's quoting Deuteronomy 32, verse 43. And here's what Deuteronomy 32, verse 43 says, Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people. Isn't that good? And then Paul goes to the Egyptian Hallel, the middle, there in Psalm 117, verse 1, and he says, again and again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, Lord him, all ye people. Now that Lord isn't meaning Lord. That Lord it means to exalt him, to highly exalt him, to lift him higher than any. How many know you need to laud the Lord? I mean, I mean, you need to love and laud the Lord, and you need to Lord, you need to you need to love and laud and Lord the Lord, the Lord. Amen. Hello. I know what you're thinking, preacher. Move on. Well, I don't like what you're thinking. But anyway, go back with me to Psalm 117. Anybody getting anything out of this? Are you learning? So next time someone says to you, what is the Egyptian Hallel? You'll know what I'm talking about. It means praise. Hallel means praise Yahweh. Now, verse 2 tells us why we should praise God. How many know there ought to be a why when we praise God? Because we want to praise God intelligently. So verse 2 gives us two reasons to praise God. The first reason is in verse 1, God loves everybody. The first reason is God cares. God calls us home to praise him, whether we be Jew or Gentile, we're called home. But there's two reasons in verse 2 for us to praise God. Notice verse 2 says, for his merciful kindness is great toward us. There it is. Merciful kindness. How many would agree that's some pretty good praise material? Hello? You hear people say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Well, now you've given the command, now let's praise him. When you say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, you're not praising the Lord. You're making a command, an announcement. You're making a, a, a confirmed a statement that we all should praise the Lord, that Yahweh should be praised, that Yahshua should be praised, that God is worthy of praise. Now, what are we going to praise him for? His mercy and kindness is shed upon us. Woo! Praise the Lord. His mercy and kindness is for us. His mercy and kindness is great toward us. That's why we praise the Lord. What's your praise, preacher? His mercy and kindness is great toward us. What's your praise, preacher? I just told you. His mercy, his kindness is great toward us. I love that, don't you? When someone just shouts out in church, praise the Lord, you know, I, I'm okay with that, but we ought to have intelligent praise. Know why we're praising God. Amen? I know some of you are thinking, well, I just, it's all I can do to just praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Well, you need to get a little more intelligence in your praise. So the first reason for praise is merciful kindness and great. He is great toward us. Here's the second reason we praise the Lord. The truth of the Lord endures forever. We praise the Lord because of this book right here. 
We praise the Lord because his mercy endures forever. We praise the Lord because heaven and earth shall pass away, but Jesus' words shall not pass away. We praise the Lord because we're standing on a solid rock, the word of God. We praise the Lord because the, 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 the grass withered and the flower fallen, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. We praise the Lord because the Bible is true, because Jesus is real because God's coming back. We praise the Lord because God loves us. We praise the Lord because nothing shall separate us from the love of God. We praise the Lord because God's our comforter. We praise the Lord because God's our almighty Savior. We praise the Lord because we're forgiven of our sin. We praise the Lord because God is on our side. And if God be for us, who can be against us? We praise the Lord because one day Jesus Christ is coming back. We praise the Lord because God is a living God, a saving God, a delivering God. We praise the Lord because God is real. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I had so much to praise the Lord about right there. I about lost all my wind. Amen. Let's look at this deep verse, two verses. Notice it says, for his mercy and kindness is great toward us. And his truth, the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Well, let's go to the great Hallel psalm. Let's just go to the great Hallel psalm. What is the great Hallel psalm? Hallel means Praise Yahweh. Let's go to the great Hallel Psalm. Psalm 136. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. By the way, this is my favorite Old Testament passage of Scripture. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. The Lord is good, his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto God, the God of gods. For his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of hosts, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, and for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that smote the Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand, with a strength stretched out arm, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into two parts or into parts, for his mercy endureth forever, and, and made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endureth forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his mercy endureth forever. And to him which led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which smote great kings, for his mercy endureth forever. And slew famous kings, for his mercy endureth forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endureth forever. Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endureth forever. And gave their land for an inheritance, for his mercy endureth forever. Even in his, in his heritage of Israel, his servants, for his mercy endureth forever, who remembered us in our lowest state. Woo! Who remembered us in our lowest state, for his mercy endureth forever, and hath redeemed us from our enemies, for his mercy endureth forever, who giveth food to all flesh, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. Wow. Praise will just wear you out. Isn't that good? You know, some of us need to, and when I say us, I'm going to include myself, and we need to practice more praise. 
We do, really. We need to practice more praise, even to the extent that people might think we are nuts. We need to, we need to practice more praise, even to the point that it might cause us to be branded that crazy guy that goes to church. Amen? Well, I like it reserved. I like it quiet. I like it kind of mellow. I like to worship the Lord in the quiet. There's a graveyard right down here at the Ozark Cemetery. Last time I was there, it was really quiet. After the preacher left the grave, it, it was quiet. I've been down to the cemetery early in the morning on Easter. I always go to Dad's grave early Easter morning. I've been down there before, sun, before the sun goes up, and it's pretty quiet down there. But it don't stay quiet because I start praising the Lord. Amen? One, one morning I was praising God, and it was still dark, and I was just, whoo, praising the Lord for his resurrection. Jesus Christ is the, is the resurrection of the life, and he that believeth in him should not per, uh, will not uh, perish, but will be raised. The dead shall raise again. He's the great I am. I'm praising God. The Lord himself should descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God, and I'm excited about the graves shall open because Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, and I'm just praising God, and lights come on. Not white lights, red ones and blue ones. And they pull up to the graveyard and they say, are you all right? I said, yeah. They said, are you grieving? I said, no. They, said, they thought maybe I was grieving. Did you lose a loved one? I said, no. Jesus don't allow me to lose loved ones. And when I started talking about Jesus, they said, carry on. And they got out of there. Because the last thing you want to be is caught in a graveyard with a preacher before sunrise. Amen? Hello? Graveyards don't scale me. They don't scare me, it scare me. Scale, scale me. No, graveyards don't scare me. Ronald Reagan's most favorite joke. How many remember Ronald Reagan? Some of you are really old. Ronald Reagan used to tell this joke, even to the Soviet Union uh, leaders. He told this joke everywhere when he loved it. He said there, there was a drunk walking through the graveyard, and somebody dug a grave as freshly dug, and the drunk fell down in it. And he tried to get up and tried to get up and tried to get up, and finally the drunk just got so tired the drunk just fell asleep at the end of the grave. Another old drunk come in there and fell in the same grave. And the other drunk's trying to get out, and the other one wakes up and taps him on the shoulder and says, you'll never get out of here. <laughs> but he did. <laughs> yeah, you, got, you got a bit, that's a good one. We just need to praise the Lord. We need to practice praising the Lord. We need to practice being happy people. We need to practice being joyful people. We need to practice worshiping the Lord and praising God. Amen. Just giving God glory. Psalm 117, shortest verse, shortest chapter. But one of the most powerful lessons about praise the Egyptian Hallel. It wouldn't hurt us to learn a few songs from Psalms. In fact, it wouldn't hurt us to memorize Psalm 113 all the way to Psalm 118. And if you want to really have a grand finale and have the great Hallel, memorize Psalm 136. And then you not only will be out of breath when you read it, you'll be out of mind when you memorize it. Amen? I don't always remember things because the older I get, the se I seem to forget things. And when I go vote, at the, and by the way, we're going to vote right away, aren't we, on the spring election. Uh, and um, when I go down there to vote, they always ask for my driver's license. And they're holding it. They won't let me see it. And they say, what's your address? 
and I'll tell them my address. And they'll say, okay, okay, you can, here's your, here's your ballot. And I always tell them, look, I'm old, but I know how to get home. Amen? How many in this room know how to get home? What a great God we serve. What an amazing God. I, I got to quit. But uh, <laughs> I've enjoyed preaching tonight, even if you didn't get much out of it. I, at, least you could, at least you found out what an Egyptian halal is. Amen? He said, I know what it is now. It's the shortest chapter in the Bible. It's the shortest song in the Bible and the longest sermon I've heard in a while on Sunday night. No, it ain't that bad. It ain't that bad. Chris, come and bring us on. Praise God. We've been preaching famous scriptures from the Bible. We'll be in uh, Old Testament this coming Wednesday night. I do want to encourage everybody to come and be a part of that. We've been having a good time with these famous scriptures from the Bible really learning a lot of good stuff, familiar verses, but yet we, we're we discovering, and so am I, that we don't know all about them. We just thought we did. And what a great lesson from God's Word. Stand with me. We're going to give an invitation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Him for His loving kindness, His merciful kindness. Praise Him for His power. Praise Him for His forgiveness. Praise Him for His Word, His forever truth. Amen. We're going to give an invitation. Maybe you'd like to come to the altar tonight and just do a little praise at the altar. Just praise Him a little bit at the altar. Altar's open for you to come. Chris, go ahead.